God says, I have kept to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. You're not alone. There's 7,000 faithful. And then verse 5 says, In the same way then, there has also come to be at the present time a remnant, listen to this, a remnant of believing Jews in the present when Paul is writing this, according to God's gracious what? Choice. According to God's gracious choice. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1, 1, to those who reside as aliens, sure, because they're believers and therefore they're aliens in the world, they're scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Listen to this, who are chosen, who are chosen. As you read through the epistles of the New Testament, which means you're, you're basically starting after uh, the book of Acts with the book of Romans, as you go through all the epistles, all the way to the book of Revelation, every time you see the word call or called, it refers to God's effectual, electing, sovereign choice to call someone to salvation. The called are those who are effectively called, not, not just a general call, such as in the gospel statement, many are called but few are chosen. Whenever the call is identified in the epistles, it is an effectual call. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful through whom you were called into fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We are the chosen and the predestined and therefore the called. In Ephesians chapter 1, we continue in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ. How, how is this so? How is it that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ? Verse 4, just as He chose us in Him, that is in Christ, before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. There it is. He chose us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him at the end when we're glorified. Verse 5, He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to Himself, listen to this, according to the kind intention of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, which He freely bestowed on us in the Beloved." All that language there says we are chosen. We are chosen for final holiness and blamelessness. In love we were predestined to be adopted as sons through Christ. All of this because of the kind intention of God's own uninfluenced free will, so that in the end all the praise and glory goes to Him for His grace freely bestowed on us. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 4, Paul writes to the Thessalonian church, and listen to how he identifies them, knowing brethren. How does he know? Well, verse 3. I've seen your work of faith, I've seen your labor of love, I've seen the steadfastness of your hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the presence of our God and Father, and knowing, brethren, by all of that, beloved of God, His choice of you. You're the chosen. You're the elect. It's evident from your life. And one other text, 2 Thessalonians 2.13, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. And Paul again says to the Thessalonians, we should always give thanks to God for you. <laughs> you don't thank the person for being smart enough to come to Jesus, you thank God. 
We should always give thanks to God for you, brother and beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. There wouldn't be any capability for a person to be sanctified, and sanctification begins at the point of salvation, separated from sin. There wouldn't be any hope of sanctification or any hope of faith in the truth unless God had chosen you from the beginning for salvation.